Jennifer, we're so proud of you, and hi to everyone in Zoom world. Great to see you too. Welcome to the Florida Capitol. Yeah. I am so excited to have you here. This brings me so much joy because, candidly, it's been a very long three weeks. Yeah. So it's amazing <laughs> to see familiar faces and folks who are here to advocate for the arts and culture community. Again, my name is Ana Diaz Kamani. I am proud to serve District 47 in the state legislature. So to my Orlandonians and Warner Parkians, Welcome, it's great to have you here. Um, when I first ran for office back in 2018, I knew that arts and culture funding would be a very important part of my mission. Um, growing up in Orlando, I, I was a high school thespian at University High School, so troop 4848, we even had a hand signal for it. Um, and once you're a thespian, you're always a thespian. And so I actually was in tech, believe it or not, I was not on stage. And I loved um, building props and costumes, but really for me, theater was my safe space because I grew up in a working class family. My mom passed away to cancer 18 years ago this week. And so I was 13 years old with that type of trauma and went into high school as a freshman and I saw my first ever musical and it was Carousel. And I just remember being a freshman in that auditorium watching this magic happen before me and I fell in love and started uh, volunteering in my high school theater program when I was a sophomore and did it for all three years of high school. And then actually when I got to UCF, um, though I did not pursue theater full time despite people wanting me to, um, I was able to integrate arts into my curriculum. I, I pursued a political science degree and a woman and gender studies degree mm -hmm. and took many theater classes, more studying the content of theater and the impact of arts in sharing values and connecting people. And so when I was running for office, you know, we were, we were at the point experiencing a major degradation in arts and culture funding. Everyone here knows that to a point where organizations wouldn't even apply because the ROI and the cost benefit analysis of applying made no sense. And so knocking on doors, this issue always came up for us. And so once we got elected, the first event we hosted with Representative Carlos Smith, who I know his staff is here, hoping he'll be able to stop by soon too, was indeed focused on uh, arts and culture over at the Orlando Repertory Theater. So shout out to the rep. They hosted us and we had an amazing like two hour discussion with 200 people in the audience. And that was the beginning of something powerful because we marched in as two Democrats in a Republican majority legislature and we pushed our colleagues to care about this issue. I remember speaking to uh, leadership at the time and you know, Everyone talks about football and talks about basketball and baseball. And here I am, let's talk about the ballet. Let's talk about the museum. Let's talk about um, uh, dance. And it's so interesting because when you share those stories, you start getting these lawmakers who don't typically maybe have a personal connection, um, but their daughter is in theater. Their daughter is on Broadway now, or um, they, they love um, going to see uh, the community theater in their backyard, or they they saw an advertisement of a upcoming exhibit, you know, or the history of Florida being archived and being shared. So I really encourage y'all as you're having your conversations today. I know some folks are already already going to the doors. Um, you know, embrace the personal narrative you have and share that with these lawmakers, but also emphasize that ROI because I, I do think that the economic argument is one that is is so hard to dispel. Um, this really is a job crater. It, it really has been incredible all through the pandemic, how despite the obstacles the arts and culture community has faced, being some of the first people to have to close and then some of the last to open, um, how we've been able to thrive. And in the past year, I've been proud to join the board of the Orlando Gate Chorus and Water Park Playhouse in my district. So, um, you know, these are incredible community theaters that they, they, they transform lives in powerful ways for every generation. And so carry forward that message. I know that it works. We've seen arts and culture funding from that year increase by 800% and then increased again last session. And again, these are uh, chairmen of these budget silos um, that at first glance, you know, they might not prioritize issues, but once they hear your story and they hear the district impact, uh, they really do get behind us. And so thank you again. Happy to answer any questions that folks have, but beyond that, uh, you have a great one, and Jennifer, it's been great to see 
uh, um, the statewide coalition continue to grow and prosper. So keep up the amazing work and know that we got your back.